Hi guys! Greetings from Madrid. Um, it's good to be back in reality. <laughs> I've missed you guys. I'm so excited to share what happened in a Camino. How was it? What I experienced? What I learned? All the awesome people I got to meet. Um, but first things first. So yes, I'm here in Madrid. I'll be headed to Sevilla, the south of Spain tomorrow. So I'm super excited. Kind of, sort of. It's supposed to be really hot. So follow me on Snapchat and Instagram and Facebook and Twitter to find out how I'm dealing with that heat. Um, and so back to the good stuff, El Camino. Um, before I share with you guys my video, I kind of wanted to tell you guys exactly how everything was and how my day was and, and how I started and how I ended. So for those of you that read my post right before I left, it was kind of up in the air. I didn't know why I was doing the Camino. I couldn't exactly tell, give you a specific reason, but I knew that I had various reasons as to why I wanted to do it, but I definitely wanted to finish. Above anything else, I wanted to finish. And for anybody that knows me, they know that I'm stubborn. Started on April 13th in Leon, and I arrived in Leon, um, and I walked for a total of 16 days. Um, but I arrived in Leon and I walked for a total of six days and took two days rest because my feet were horrible, guys. Oh my god, they were so bad. I had blisters, so much pain. Yeah, it was it was really bad. And I actually didn't think I was going to make it at one point. I was totally doubting myself because I was in so much pain. But I did, so whatever. Uh, <laughs> and all that stuff that I packed, remember? Well, I kind of got rid of most of it. In fact, I got rid of all of it. I only got the essentials sleeping bag one pair of clothes that i wore practically every day with an extra t-shirt if i decided to change because it was too cold so like long sleeves and one set of pajamas don't worry i washed my clothes every night so i wasn't stinky that much anyways <laughs> so, anyways um it was an experience it was definitely something that i will absolutely do again and this time i'll do it from the start of the very beginning, which is from France, is from Saint Jean, um, and hopefully I'll do that in a couple of years. Um, and I'm more prepared this time for sure. I'm ready for well, at least I hope to be prepared, because I met people along the Camino that had done it three or four times and were still in pain and still had blisters and still forgot something, um, which I, I I found comforting per se, you know, especially for somebody that was doing it alone. For those of you that asked, I am or I did do it alone. Uh, I started alone and I met so many people along the way and I finished alone. I did, you know, have friends along the way and stuff like that, but I did it all alone. Um, I found myself alone in the woods sometimes um, looking for arrows to the direction of the Camino and completely lost with just horses and sheep and cows, uh, which was also really interesting. <laughs> but overall, it was a wonderful experience. Um, I... I started, my days usually started around, at the very beginning, when I started walking, they started around like 6.30, 7 with a good breakfast, and then I'd start walking at 8 o'clock, maybe till about like 10.30, 11, then I'd have like another coffee, and then I'd continue walking till about 2, and I'd have a big lunch with some wine, and then I'd continue walking till about 5.36, where I'd reach a destination, which is usually in Alberga. And just so you guys know, in Alberga, is specifically for the pilgrims that walk in Camino. They're kind of like hostels um, and they provide that type of service and they have usually some of them have restaurants inside or they have kitchens where you can cook your own meals um, but yeah it's usually where all the pilgrims stay and there's always uh, two types of albergas. There's always private albergas and public. Um, the public ones are by the actual you know villages or the the city that you're staying in and the private ones are like you know if a mom and pop shop think of it that way. Uh, so yeah, so I would stay in an alberga and I would wake up the next morning and do it all over again. Um, the albergas were usually rooms of 6 to 20 people. Um, you slept in a sleeping bag on top of a mattress. So you, I had a mummy sleeping bag, which meant that I was like this. <laughs> this was very uncomfortable. Um, but definitely made me appreciate what I do have. Um, it was nice to sleep on a couch again. <laughs> and, or a bed, you know. Um, and towards the end of my Camino, because the last like four or five days, I got really tired, especially because you're walking in Camino and as you get to the north of Spain, you start realizing that the weather gets a little colder, more rainier, and it's just, 
it takes a lot of you to get up in the morning and be like, okay, I gotta finish this. So I was waking up at like 8.30 and heading out at 9. <laughs> I was like exhausted, but I was like, I gotta finish, I gotta finish. And when I got to Santiago, I was like ready to race. I was on a roll. <laughs> um, it was such a relief when I had walked into the city and been like, oh my God, where do I go now? I'm done. I don't have to walk anymore. Um, and I found that all my friends that I had, you know, met previously, um, bef like previously in El Camino that had made it already to Santiago because they were walking faster than me or whatever their case was, also, we all said the same thing. We were like, what do we do now? Like, what happens? You know, do we continue walking? What happens when we wake up? We don't have to wake up early. We get to take showers in hotels. You know, it was, it was, it was something that you, you turned around and definitely appreciated it. And a part of me slightly misses it, simply because uh, I met a guy in the Camino, and it was really funny. He said to me that our backpacks are our home. And when you didn't have your backpack, you literally felt like you had lost a piece of you. Even though I got rid of half the crap that I had packed, and I only had the essentials, that was it. That was my home. And without that bag, I didn't have clothes, I didn't have, you know, my sleeping bag. I didn't have that little piece. Um, of me which was something that you appreciate anyways you guys will read all about that in my next post when i talk about everything that i've learned um what the camino meant to me and you guys will also hear about all the people that i've met along the way the characters um great characters <laughs> good people friends of a lifetime for sure um because it definitely takes a specific individual to do this um alone or with friends or whatever the case is you're not walking fields, you know, you're walking mountains and you're going up mountains and down mountains and it's raining and it's windy and it's rough. And there were times where I was completely alone in the middle of the woods with nobody around and I was exhausted. My legs couldn't go anymore and I literally just stood there looking down and I was like, well, either I go or I stay and I cannot stay because I'm in the middle of the woods, what the heck do I do? <laughs> so. You have to push yourself. You have to find that inner strength to keep going. It's kind of a metaphor of life, no? Uh, but anyways, it was a great time. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Feel free to ask me as many questions as you want about the Camino. I know a lot of you guys are really interested in pursuing uh, El Camino de Santiago sometime within the next few months or a couple years from now. Whatever the case is, I'm here to help. I definitely have a lot of pointers what to pack, what not to pack what type of shoes you need, very important, um, and how to even prepare. But there's a difference between walking with a backpack and walking without. Yes, so I'll make sure to make a point of that. So uh, keep following me. Um, yeah, some exciting stuff along the way. And um, thanks guys for following. I'll see ya. Hey guys, good morning. It's about 6.30 in the morning, April 13th, Monday. I am officially getting ready for my Camino. I'm on my way now to El Azul uh, bus station in Madrid. And from there, I'm uh, very well on my way to Leon. Uh, like I said, it's 6.30 in the morning. I'm whispering because my friend is sleeping. Um, and yeah, I'm about to head out. Let's go take a look at my bag and wish me luck. Come on. I've been climbing my way through the sky Searching for answers that I'll never find Losing my breath as I fall Burning the fly, letting go of it all Burning the fly, letting go of it all That's Astorga And that's a cross <laughs> Those are the other pilgrims this is me. I'm exhausted. <laughs> but my legs feel good. Oh, anyway, it's beautiful. Another five kilometers to Astorga. This about sums up what I've been doing all day. 
what I've been hiking all day. Lord help me. Today's supposed to be a hard day and we all decided <laughs> to take horses up. <laughs> Make a party. Because all our feet hurt. Well, mine in particular. Hmm. Should be fun. Your feet hurt after. <laughs> everybody back home I'm having a blast Sky 